the fragrance of selfless love that has drawn the world into one family. The truth of an eternal message that has been revealed through every act and word. The fulfillment in service that has been taught by relentless sacrifice. The Lord's own life is indeed His message. Sai Ram and greetings from Prashanti Niliyam. We are today well past the halfway mark of our month long serial entitled The Message of the Lord and we have just completed discussing two important examples that Bhagwan Baba has set for the entire humanity. First, we considered Baba's teachings and message with regards to health care over four episodes. In the next four episodes, we discussed Baba's teachings and message with regards to educare. Today, we shall discuss about water, especially because Swami's contribution in this aspect is something that is unparalleled. Let us begin by reminding ourselves of some basic facts. First is that water is an important and indeed vital constituent of the human body. Water makes up almost 75% of the body by weight. No wonder then that next to air, water is most essential for sustaining life. Whereas one can go on without food for days, one cannot survive without water for even one day. That is how important water is for life. God in His mercy has put plenty of water on earth. In fact, when one sees from the space, one would see more water than land. So on the face of it, there really should not be any water problem at all. Yet there is. And what is worse, due to our foolishness, we are all making it worse all the time. Now if you look at the map of the world, you would find that fresh water is not distributed evenly around the world. Interestingly, there is a lot of water where the population is less, while in the crowded parts of the world, availability of fresh water is much less. Some regions are pretty unlucky, and the worst such regions are the deserts. It is only people who have to constantly struggle to get even drinking water know how valuable it is. Society is seldom bothered about the woes of such people and through his many drinking water projects Swami has been regularly reminding society of its duties and obligations towards its less fortunate citizens. And those of you who are familiar with Baba's early life would recall how when he was a small boy named Satya and was living with his elder brother Seshama Raju in a place called Kamalapuram, young Satya had to fetch drinking water every day for the entire family from a far off well. What we are trying to tell you Swami is no stranger to water scarcity. After all, Puttaparthi is located in a vast, arid, and drought-prone region known as Rayalaseema. Groundwater in Rayalaseema is scarce and where available has an unacceptable level of fluoride that causes bone deformities and dental disorders. For decades, the villagers of Rayalaseema, particularly of Anantapur district, faced great hardship in getting good drinking water and it seemed as if there was no one to listen to their woes. God 
being the ultimate refuge of the poor, the destitute and the forlorn, it is no surprise that Swami came to the rescue of these water-starved villagers. It all started in typical Sai style, one might say, in November 1994. During a function in Prashanti Nilayam, when Swami most unexpectedly began expressing his concern about the plight of villagers desperate for good drinking water. Present on the days was the then Prime Minister Mr. P. V. Narasimha Rao, himself from the state of Andhra Pradesh. The occasion was to honour a doctor who had performed the first ever heart surgery in Baba's super speciality hospital. Swami had dropped a big hint and the government no doubt heard it. But then, sympathetic though it might be, the governmental machinery moves ever so slowly. Feeling that the people had waited long enough, around March 1995, Swami decided to personally come to the rescue of the people of Anantapur district. He then gave a simple directive to the Sri Satya Sai Central Trust. He essentially said, People have suffered long enough and you must now launch a bold and imaginative scheme to relieve their suffering. Start with Anantapur district and set yourself the goal of providing safe drinking water to as many people as possible in as many villages as possible and in as short time as possible no matter what the cost. The best source of safe drinking water is rainwater that flows in canals, water that is stored in dams and water that exists as subsoil water in riverbeds. Tap them all. Draw water from irrigation canals where possible. Purify this water and distribute. Draw water from irrigation dams where possible. Purify this water and distribute. Draw water from riverbeds and distribute. You may face difficulties like pumping water against gravity to reach villages that are at a higher level than the source. Do not worry, but go ahead. Forget about the cost and the expenditure, leave it to Swami. Your task is to go ahead at full speed, execute the project in the best possible manner and in the shortest possible time. I want my love to reach out to millions in the form of sweet and safe drinking water, guaranteeing them protection from waterborne diseases and filling them with ananda or bliss. To make it clear that he was quite serious, Swami started personally monitoring progress literally on a day-to-day -day basis. No wonder things started to move swiftly. It is quite fascinating how imaginatively the engineers worked to implement Swami's directive. There was an irrigation dam and its water was tapped as a source. Similarly, there was an irrigation canal and that too was used as a resource. Finally, there was a river, actually the Chitravati river that flows past Puttaparthi. These days the river is so dry that we do not realize that in the past the river actually flowed into another river finally reaching the sea. Safe drinking water straight away meant 
no use of groundwater. Groundwater was not only having too much fluoride but also not easily accessible in many places. And this clearly meant surface water alone could be used and surface water meant rainwater. Virtually this project contains more than 2500 kilometers of pipelines. That's a major task. So that is the, I mean, quantum of uh, the work we have taken up. So nearly 2500 kilometers of pipelines we laid, covering big diameters, even up to 600 millimeters diameter. We used that bigger diameters for the first time in that uh, scheme. Then we constructed more than 268 warhead service reservoirs and another about 160 ground level service reservoirs also. And we constructed very huge summer storage tanks of nearly seven tanks we constructed and one more tank also we improved. That is how about eight tanks we have done under this major scheme. The capacity of the tanks, the bed itself varies from 30 to 100 acres nearly. That's the, an average I'm telling. That is the size of such a big tanks we constructed there. The type of project which we have taken in Anantapur district would have normally taken between six to eight years for the government uh, type of uh, system to establish and provide drinking water. Actually 80% of the work was finished in one year, even though the total project and stabilization and uh, ensuring that the water supply is coming perfectly to within two years. By November 1995, roughly 10 months after work started, the project had been substantially completed. And on 18th November 1995, Prime Minister Narasim Harao came again to Puttaparthi, this time to inaugurate the huge Anantapur summer storage tank. with the gift of drinking water through the scheme of summer storage tanks here. Neeru Dorakadu Anna Tvanti Ye Jilla Lo Neeru Pushkalanga Dorukudu Undi Baba Gari Anugrahan Tvani Ye Naad Chappu Kuntu Na Vante Five days later, on the occasion of Swami's 70th birthday, the then President Dr. Shankar Dayal Sharma inaugurated the entire Anantapur drinking water scheme. At last, the nightmare of drinking water scarcity was over for the people of Anantapur district. We 
ఈ నీళ్ళు తాగినిచ్చి అంత బాగా ఆరోగ్యం అనేది అంత రాత్రి పది గంటల నుంచి బాబా అనేది అనుకుంటాం After operating the waterworks for over a year, on 19th October 1997, Swami gifted the entire project to the people of Andhra Pradesh as a token of his infinite love. Speaking on that occasion, the then Chief Minister of Andhra Pradesh, Mr. Chandra Babu Naidu, unabashedly declared that Swami had done what the government ought to have. Swami also spoke on that occasion and made a divine promise. Anantapur was just the beginning and thereafter a string of drinking water projects have followed starting with projects in the northern districts of Medak and Mahabubnagar. It is to be noted that in all these projects water quality was continuously tested to make sure that it was what it was supposed to be. These districts were also arid and had acute drinking water shortage. There were some regions mostly consisting of villages where there was scarcity. Basically, water was drawn from rivers in the neighborhood, duly purified and pumped to where it was needed. Baba did not have any inauguration ceremony. He just asked the water system to start operating the moment it was completed. That's the way Swami does it most of the time. Finish the job, make the people happy and move on to the next task of compassion. Once again, about a million people were benefited. In terms of statistics, Swami has in the 10 years since 1995 created facilities for providing safe drinking water to about 10 million people spread over five districts and one major metropolitan city. For comparison, the population of Sweden is about 8.9 million. The population of Hungary is 9.8 million. And the population of Belgium is 11.3 million. In other words, it is as if Swami has provided drinking water to an entire country in Europe. For executing these various drinking water projects, the Sri Satya Sai Central Trust has spent over 810 crore rupees or roughly 180 million dollars. Every one of the assets created in the various drinking water projects have been given away to society by Baba most lovingly without taking a single cent. An act of charity and magnanimity unmatched by any private charitable organization anywhere in the world. Swami's currency is love. He showers love on people by serving them and people shower back love on Swami via expressions of gratitude. Can it be any other way with God? Remember what he wrote long ago to his elder brother 
hoped that he would come to the aid of those who felt totally helpless. And what you have been witness to in the last few episodes are some examples of that. Through all these examples, Swami is clearly telling us, Dear humans, you think you are ordinary people. No, you are not. For you are verily God because I am in you. That means all the power of God is in you. All the love of God is in you and all the compassion that he embodies is in you. Why don't you unlock these treasures and start helping your fellow beings? Why don't you stop rushing and help that blind person across the street or give water to someone who is thirsty? You need not do massive projects. All you have to do is make efforts to unlock the love and compassion that is in your heart. You will have to agree that there is a message from Swami for all of us. All of us keep saying, we love you Swami, we love you Swami. And we say, Swami, we are ready to die for you Swami. What Swami wants us to do is not die for him, but live for him. That's all we have for this episode. And do join us for the continuation of this water story in our next episode. Till then, thank you for being with us. Jai Sai Ram.